meeting will come to order. Please stand with me and join in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. For everyone's disclosure, we've got two board members that are participating remotely. They're watching the live feed, and they're on the phone here. And I'm, if they have comments, it'll, I'll play that, or I'll put that in the microphone here. And if anyone has a question for them from the public or board members, we'll coordinate that way. So Donna's going to now ask if they're here. Please read our mission statement together. To unconditionally nurture our students to be successful, proud, and prepared to thrive. Okay, we're going to start with our building project presentation. It's my understanding it's going to be. Yeah, um, I have um, Scott from Site Logics here. Uh, we're going to pull down the big screen so everybody can see it. The board got the first look at it last night at our building committee meeting, but I would ask the board to come out and take another look at it to see if this is the direction that they agree on.
Okay, first off, I'd like to thank Richard for his help. IT is not one of my specialties, and I appreciate him being here tonight. Um, again, thank you very much to the to the board, to the administration, and the staff at uh, Clearing Limestone here. Thank you tonight for coming out. My name is Scott Palmquist. I'm with SiteLogic. Um, I am out of our Oakmont office in uh, Allegheny County. Uh, SiteLogic, uh, we've done probably 200, 250 projects for school districts. Uh, across the state. Uh, we are a construction management company. We also do ESCO projects, which are energy savings projects for school districts. Uh, we come in, we, we work with school districts, um, understanding that they are at this point wanting to get to another point, and the process in between is usually very cloudy, and our expertise helps guide the district through that process and being able to look at uh, delivery methods to, to help present options to the school district to accomplish your goals. And I can tell you, uh, based on the meeting we had last night and other meetings we've had, um, you should be very proud of the how engaged the district is on trying to prevent, to provide, I should say, a good learning center for the students. That was a lot of goals that came out of this whole thing, and I want to commend you for that. Not a lot of districts get caught up in that, and I want to thank you for that. I think you are right on target where you want to be. I'm not a resident here, but I would be I would be proud to say that I'm impressed with your direction of where you're going with this. So hats off to you. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go through this this presentation. I'm going to uh, about thirty thousand feet on this thing, trying to keep it quick, try to get it done in about 15, 20 minutes at most, uh, and then we'll be able to you know answer questions that I need in regard. The school district has, or the audience has. All right. Okay, the agenda that we have right now, as you can see up on here, is wanting to talk about the project approach, wanting to look at uh, the the budget, the, the, the grants, the, the program schedule, and then open up into questions. That's kind of what our goal was, looking at this thing when we presented. Um, if you look very quickly, we, we want to be able to focus on what the needs were. The needs were to be looking at the elementary school and being able to provide upgrades in the systems that's going to make a better learning center for the students. And I'm gonna, we're going to talk about this as I go through here. We're talking about you know um, better air quality in for the students, being able to look at ways in which to have secure vestibules, so you can be able to have a secure area for people trying to get in your buildings. Those are very important in today's world. Unfortunately, we have to deal with these issues. And the goal is to be able to have uh, these types of system in place to provide a safe place for these students to be able to come and learn. So what we want to look at is the, the upgrades at the elementary school. We want to look at being able to provide window upgrades, so we're addressing the needs uh, with, with uh, new windows. We're looking at the, the uh, entrance improvements. And we're looking at being able to take the outer area of the building and being able to enhance that. Being able to provide a, a newer look uh, to the building. And while we're doing this, we're also keeping in mind that we don't have access to your checklist. We're not trying to come in here and create a Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. We want to be able to do everything with being able to provide the goal and satisfy the goal, but also be cost effective in being able to do it. So trying to balance that teeter-totter on all the projects we have. Understanding what your financial goal, goals are and still being able to try to get where you're trying to get to with the project. So if you look at HVAC upgrades, we're talking about going with a DOAS system. Now the DOAS system is it is a designated air quality system to be able to bring fresh air into the building and being able to cool it. So is it is it an actual air conditioning? No, but we're able to bring in outside air into the building 
and being able to run it through a cooling system to be able to give you a cooler air system and also being able to uh, de dehumidify and, and take the moisture out of the air and being able to provide a better air quality for the students. And that. When you take the moisture out, you're also trying to drop the air temperature for the uh, inside areas. And also one of the one of the things we were looking at and the goal was to be, be able to capture the needs of the gymnasium in the in the elementary school, being able to look at that and how what were ideas we come up with. Now please understand that there, there's going to be two areas of this. This project is divided into two different areas. And, I, and I'll explain to you why. It's because you want to use different delivery systems to be able to capture that goal. And I'll explain why. The one area we have rock solid numbers on. And we're able to give a guaranteed budget to the school district on that area. The other part, the scope is still not 100% design. It is still being able to be tweaked with the district, with the administration, with the board, and with input of the users. So when we talk about things in the gym, we're talking about um, we're talking about concepts that are there. When you look at it, I don't want you to be able to count seats and say that's exactly the number of seats that are going to be there. They this is a concept that we're looking at, and these are estimates based on that. So can this can that part of it be tweaked? Absolutely. All right. Here's some ideas in regard to the gymnasium, being able to uh, have approximately about 7,300 square feet, being able to have toilet areas, new toilet areas for it, being able to have a storage area. Uh, the gym, it actually increases the gym area to where it could be able to be utilized by not only elementary students, but it could also be a competitive gym if needed, if you decided to use it that way. Also, as I said, being able to provide a secure vestibule, being able to take the entrance in and out of the building so whenever the students come in, you're able to have an area where visitors are trying to come in. You're able to, a lot of people refer to this as a mousetrap, so you would enter the building. You can't go any further. You can't get back out until you are processed or you are gone through a secure system to make sure that you are somebody they want to allow into the building. It's part of the security system a lot of school districts are going to. That is something also we looked at, and that was one of the goals that the administration and the board had had. And this is some ideas here in regard to a uh, secure vestibule in the elementary area. Being able to pick up, you know, different additional areas for office space and still being able to provide a secure entrance. In the area they're talking about, possibly could be used for additional administrative office, different offices. Again, those are concepts at this point. And this is a overall conceptual project plan that we could look at. This concept would provide additional parking spaces out there, which is always the situation with you know a lot of school districts, and I understand your districts in the in the same boat, and that is when you know loading kids often on the buses, a lot of times you get backed up trying to be able to provide, take that all into consideration and try to ease that pain. Now, we're proposing two different types of delivery method here. The first one is called a GESA, G-S-E-A. It's Guaranteed Energy Savings Program. The reason we like that program is because it, the other option is to go the traditional lowest responsible bidder. When you are in the school district and you're using public funds, you have to publicly bid things and you have to go to the lowest responsible bidder. Sometimes you hit a home run and you get a really good contractor and they do an outstanding job. Sometimes you get a contractor that is not as strong and you could end up with some nightmares on the project. We've seen it. The Giza of hybrid project, the Giza end of it, the items that fit in to the Giza qualification allows you to pull from a preferred vendor list. This is not people that we have up our sleeve, that we have a financial interest in. It is a list of contractors that we know are good and reliable, and we also would work with the district. And if you have contractors that you believe should be on that list and you want to do work with, we want to be able to pull them into this uh, process also. And what we're able to do 
is we're able to pull numbers from them, guaranteed numbers from them. And the key thing on this thing, if you know anything about construction, one of the dirty words in construction is change orders. Well, under the Giza end of it, by law, there's no change orders unless the district would change the scope. So if you decide you wanted to change something, obviously that's going to change the scope of the project, then that would be an allow to be adjustment in the price of it. But if, you, if you're rock solid on your scope of work, and we go out and get those numbers, guess what, folks? You're protected. And if you've ever been involved in a project and you have a contractor that um, is not a good contractor and they're worried about just making the money and doing everything they can, they can change order to death. But there are things that, unfortunately, we would have to do through a publicly bid process on this. So, as I said, we're talking about a Giza-type delivery system, and we're talking about a publicly bid process on this, bid system on this. And there's two different ways we want to go here. On the Giza end of it, we can guarantee those numbers right now unless the district changes the scope of work. On the other end of it, as I said, the scope was not 100% defined, so these are estimates at this point. They're strong estimates because that's one of the things we do. We are also estimators, and we come from this from a construction standpoint, not from a design standpoint. We have designers, we have an architect we brought on the team to do a lot of the design work that we showed and shared about. So when you look at the two different types of options here, the first one I'm going to talk about, and again, I'm not going to go through each one of these line items, is the Giza end of it. So you're looking at window items such as windows, LED lighting, HVAC systems and controls, switch gear. Why, why would we need to upgrade and replace that to be able to handle all the work, the, the electrical load on this? That's why those things can, would, would be on this list to do. Also, looking at the secure entranceway, the reconfiguration, we're talking about just under a $6 million project that end of it. That number can be rock solid. All right. When you're looking at the publicly bid portion of it, these items, as I said, these are, these are strong estimates at this point, but once the scope is defined, we would be able to put together bid specifications, go out to bid, and make sure that the drawings provide clarity to the bidders. If a, when a bidder is going to, a contractor is going to bid on this, one of the things they want is documents that are clear, decisive, that they understand and know what they're bidding on. And why is that important to them? Because they understand it and it's less risk to them. And look, folks, everybody's hearing about the supply chain, inflation, and everything else. Look, we know it's real. My wife and I went to a Cracker Grill yesterday and I looked at the bill, $13 for French toast. It's great French toast, but man, when you're paying 13 bucks just for French toast, you know, we, we, it's here. It's here, and it's live, and it's in front of us, and guess what? What's gas prices? Four, almost four bucks a gallon in this area, right? So we know it's real, and unfortunately, we got to live with this. It affects these projects, all right? We have, we have inflationary figures included in this that we feel that will help the district being able to go out and secure the monies to do the, to do the project. And I, and I give you credit for being able to, last night you met with a, a, uh, an investment banker, I believe, after we left and looked at your financial office. I give, I give you credit for doing that. <coughs> so if you're looking at the total project, being able to cover the scope that, we, that I outlined briefly here tonight, and we went into great detail with the district last night, as it stands right now, this project is about almost $10, $10 million, $10.2 million to do that. So if you look at it and you think, okay, what is the district getting for 10.2 million? Look, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money, there's no doubt about it. I don't care if you're a wealthy district or the poorest district in the state. You know, uh, the school board are stewards of your money and they need to spend it the right way. And I believe that they have really looked at this and tried to do the best they can with it. And they are trying to provide, and I think this gets you to that goal, is provide a very good learning center for the students, all right? And I think that's what you need. I mean, you're in competition with cyber, you're in competition with private schools and all that, and you need to be able to have a good learning center that kids are gonna to wanna to come to and wanna to learn into. So it provides good air quality, better lighting. It gives a, a new a facelift to the outside of the building. It provides 
not just a, a, uh, a, a new gymnasium to them and an addition on that, but it also that gymnasium can be used for a lot of different things. It can be used not only for the elementary, it can also be used for the secondary if the district would decide to do that. So being able to provide those types of things to, your, to the students, you, know, you look at it and think, well, when I walk into this building, what am I going to see different? You are going to be able to see new windows, new outer skin on the building, which are also going to have better air quality. We're looking at lowering the humidity in there, better high, high oxygen levels in there. Those all come into play when you're trying to provide a good learning center for the students. One of the things that we do, and we do very well, we have an office in Harrisburg right near the Capitol. We do have some people that work for us that help us be able to work with school districts and get grant monies. Uh, Garrett, last night, you know, told you guys in the last couple of years, we are three for four on being able to help district get grants. We would work with the district on being able to compile that. We would help you submit that grant. We would use any horsepower we possibly could to help the district be successful with that. One of the districts that you may be familiar with close, and I was thinking about this last night as I was driving back, and I, just, I live outside the Greensburg area, I'm not all that far away, have hunting property in Goheenville, just north of uh, New Bethlehem, but driving home last night I was thinking, you know, Armstrong School District, when they built the new high school, up on top of that hill, beautiful, beautiful building. We were able to work with the state senator in that area at the time and help them secure about $800,000 in multi-mobile funding for that entranceway from 422 back to the high school, all right? So, you know, one of the things I've always learned in business, I want to surround myself with people that are smarter than me, that are going to help me look really, really good. And that's what we do for school districts. We want to hit a home run with you, all right? I can't go out and get business if I'm walking around with black eyes because we have terrible projects, all right? We don't do that. Uh, the guys that presented last night, Mike, um, Garrett, myself, and uh, Rick, we're all, we all have financial interest in the company. So it's our name on the line, too. We all take pride in it, all right? We want this job. We want to do a good, good job for you. We want to become part of your family with it. We're not looking at one and done and get out the door. We're looking at being able to come in here, hold your hand, help you get to where you want to. And guess what? If a neighboring district wants to do a project, I want to proudly bring them over here, introduce them to you, step back, and let you tell our story. All right? That's how you grow. And that's how you develop pride in what your business is. And that's what we want to be able to do here with you. You know, we're not, we don't go after every school district out there. We try to be selective on the projects we go after. This thing was right in our sweet spot. And I think we can really help you hit home run and get this thing where you want to get to. The grants are one of the things that we do. In addition to that, Mike, Mike Arnold, who, who you guys talked with last night, Mike has a degree in architecture in the construction end of it. Mike has done, over the last few years, work with school districts. And we would ask the, ask the district to, you know, there's different ways to do it. We've had districts go to like the tech ed program and have kids that are interested in coming and maybe do it once a month or once a, once a, uh, a quarter to come in and we would do an educational program with them. We would show them and walk them through what we're doing on the project. Folks, if you know the industry, college is great. I went to college, graduated at Penn State. My degree is in business. Been doing this for 35 years. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you, don't, don't hate me if you're not a Penn State fan. I'm sorry, I saw you right away talking. <laughs> now, there you go. We are. But, you know, it, if, you, if you talk to people right now, you cannot get enough people on the trades. You young boys, are you, you all in school right now? You all in high school? I'm going to tell you right now, you need to strongly consider getting into trades. You can make a lot of money in the trades, and you can come out of the trades, come out of that education, and guess what? Your debt is not going to be like a four-year degree. And at that four-year degree and college end of it is what, you're, what you want to do, hats off to you, man. Pursue your career. Pursue your wishes. All right? But I'm telling you, right now, the way this world is set up right now, and the way business is, the trades are at an absolute must and need. All right, we do a lot of work in the career technology schools, and they are, I mean, they have, 
employers coming to them saying, you have kids in HVAC, you have kids coming out of plumbing. We want them. <clears throat> so what Mike does in these programs is he sits down and he'll show you. He'll show you the ductwork. He'll show you, look, if you want to get into designing this, then you want to get into mechanical engineering. If you want to be the one that's const you know, construct this, we'll show you. We'll show you how to do this stuff. And we'll try to help and hook you up to get into this. You know why? Because we need you in the industry. You know, we did a project at Mount Pleasant School District, Westmoreland County. We put in the contract that the contractor had to have no less than four masonries on the job. They never had over three. They couldn't get them. We helped try to get them. We went to the union halls, everything. They could not get them. So I'm just telling you, there's a, there's a need out there for that. And if you guys, if, we, if we're fortunate enough to work with the school district on that, get involved in that program. All right? Belly up the mic. Talk with Mike. Mike's got a lot of connections with that. He may be able to help you down the road. Okay? Um, that just gets me to the questions end of it. Again, I know it was a lot of information. Uh, you folks last night were drinking water out of a fire hose. I understand it. But uh, great dialogue. You guys were engaged in it. Um, I think whichever route you're going to go on this thing, you're going to have a good project because your, your heart and interest is truly, truly in what you're trying to do. So hats off. I thank you very much. And before I do leave, I want to wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy spending with family, friends, and just have some great time off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to tell you, Bob Coleman, Jonathan, the, all the administrators, they've done a great job with this. I mean, we as a board had the final decision to make, I know that, but I don't know what that, the school needs. We started out wanting to do the project in both buildings, but we can't fiscally do it. So we thought, instead of doing, and, and Bob, please, if you're not in agreement, please say so. We started out saying, let's do one right, get it paid for, and then do the second one right, instead of half doing each one. And we felt that was the best way to go from Bob, right? Jonathan's happy because we picked the elementary, of course. <laughs> and um, we, this wasn't a one-month process. This project started before we got on the board. They were dealing with people. Am I right, Bob? And there was another company involved. Um, the site logic was recommended to come in as a second company. Um, I left it up to Bob. I said, Bob, what's your opinion? Bob, you want to come up and give an opinion? You don't? Know? What's your opinion? I think they're doing a good job. You're happy with? Right, and, and they, they did the timeline of the grant and everything right down the line. And uh, I want to thank them, and I want to thank the administration, Bob, Andy, and everything they did to put it together. And uh, does anybody have any questions on it? Uh, we are not voting on this tonight. We wanted the public to get a chance to see exactly what we were presented over the past few months in the finalized presentation. Does anybody have any other questions on it? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thanks for being patient. I'm glad I didn't have to sing. Thank you.
Okay, next on the agenda we have a presentation about the VOAG students. Can everybody, can everybody hear me here? Um, Clare and Limestone Board Administration, faculty, parents, friends. Um, my name is Gary Kale. I have been very privileged to be um, a member of the instructional body of this school district. Uh, you have a great group of educators here, not teachers, educators. They care not only about the instruction that they give their students, but they care about the students themselves. And the only reason I bring this up is because this is testimony to what the investment that these people up here made in our program. We needed new well -being. We came to them and they supported us. The result of that situation is as follows. We went to the first FFA regional competition we've had in two years. We took a group with us. We took 11 boys. No, let me rephrase that. We took 11 young men to that competition. Um, when we got there, we had our opening, and we moved across the street to the area where we're going to do our testing. Now, the testing for this competition for us had to do with welding. It had to do with being able to read a transit to be able to do uh, level elevations. It had to do with block work calculations to build a foundation. And it also had a written test that was on basically everything. Plumbing, electrical, you name it, it was on there. I walked to the back of the bus, and Riley Miller, who's one of those groups, looked at me and said, Mr. K, are you going to give us a pep talk? I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I said, I'm going to tell you two things. I said, number one, I want you to walk in there as humbly as you possibly can. And number two, I want you to go in and do the job, because it will speak for itself. When the dust settled, there were 30 people who competed in this. Seven different schools. <clears throat> I have to warn you, I'm very passionate about what I do. And I knew, <clears throat> I knew I was gonna have trouble with this. <sighs> well, what happened was this. Of the top 12 positions, our students took 11. 11 of the top 12 positions. This evening because contrary to popular belief, these young men do work. Okay. Um, I'm very, very proud of them. Two of those 11 were first year students who had never participated in anything like this before, and yet both of them placed in the top 12. So again, I want to thank you for the investment in our program, and I assure you, it's the best, and it will continue to be that way because of the heart that this school district has. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have the Top 5 Student Awards. And before we get into that directly, I want to take an opportunity to thank uh, Larry Jamison and Kathy Henry, two of our board members, 
this is their, their last meeting. I wanted to thank them for their, their time, their commitment, their service. And I also want to see if you guys would be interested in reading the names and giving out the top fives. Okay. Come, come on up here and I'll give you the mic. From seventh grade, and this was for last year, right now, for last year, seventh graders, Audrey Aaron, Mariah Allison, Addison Jackson, Hope Kemmer, and Riley Morris. This is for our eighth graders, Adeline Gert, Madison Greeley, Casey Love, Logan Meyer, Heather Strom. Ninth graders, Madison Aaron, Ella Aaron, Abigail Foster, Lily Mayle, Ava Orkut, Riley Ransom, Katera Sebastian Sims, Grace Schick, Alyssa Wyant, and Daniel Wilson. Okay, now our 10th graders, Kendall Dunn, Jocelyn Henry, Riley Klingensmith, Carly Renninger, and Celia Schaefer. Michael Aaron, Brady Folks, Abigail Hines, Ruby Smith, and Regina Snyder. students for all your hard work and thank you teachers for helping me get there. Uh, at this point in time if you'd rather not stay for the rest of the meeting you're welcome to leave and we'll take a little break. If you want to stay you're welcome to stay.
Okay, getting back to our agenda for all those of you who are interested. Um, all right, uh, I can do that, right? Okay. There are, there are no budget transfers, so there is no item seven. Last time I think we did this, I thought I'd just speed things along because there's not typically a lot of discussion on this, but if you want to talk about any of these items, let me know. Six through 11 are the uh, approvals of the reports that were provided. If you would take a minute and let me know, does anyone want to talk about any one of these particular reports? Do we have a problem with us lumping them all together? Any objection from anybody? Make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve item six, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Do I have a second? Second. Second, I think Gary, I heard him first. Any further discussion from the board? All in favor say aye. All opposed, no. Any abstentions? No abstentions. Motion passed. Okay, communications, intermediate unit. Is that? Wait, hold on. Say that again, Robert. No report this evening. Wonderful. Thank you. And career. Clarion County, or Clarion Career Center representative, that's Joe. In the last month, uh, we've had a open house at the Career Center. Um, it was well attended, um, actually better attended than we thought it would be. Um, so we're looking forward to having more students come in through um, the schools as the year goes on to see about having who might be interested in coming to the Career Center. That's all I have. Thank you. Legislative Representative Gary. Uh, yes, I have uh, three things. The first thing is uh, PSBA sent a letter to the Senate opposing House Bill 1660. Uh, and 1660 would limit the temporary emergency provisions from the current period of up to four years to 60 days, and that is uh, would be taking our authority away as school boards. And uh, when an emergency results in five consecutive days of being unable to provide in-person instruction. So, uh, so uh, there's been a letter sent to the uh, Senate. Also, uh, one other thing here, seizure training. House Bill 416 provides that school nurses and other professional employees may complete online or in-person seizure management training approved by the Department of Health beginning in 2023, 22-23 school year. In consultation with the Department of Ed, must identify and approve an online course instruction in the training in seizure management. And this also does, uh, does, uh, does not obligate uh, to administer medication or provide medical care, uh, just because they've had this training. And the last thing they came about late afternoon yesterday, the Commonwealth Court has voided the mass mandates as of December 4th. They are voided and uh, it's a Thank you, Gary. Uh, CLAEA representative, do you have a report? Of course I do. Good evening. Good evening. Um, thanks for including us, and thank you to Mrs. Henry and Mr. Jameson for your time spent and your hours invested. We appreciate your efforts. Uh, next month, we'll be welcoming some new members to the board. Um, our members have been doing our best to educate our students, to keep ourselves healthy, to keep our students healthy, but at times, inevitably, absences happen, and that has created a great need for substitute coverage. Um, and even though our list continues to grow with people volunteering to join our search for subs, sometimes their substitutes just aren't always there. So members have asked to share that that adds to their stress and the extra work caused by removing classroom teachers from their regular class to then go substitute in a different classroom. Um, we just encourage creative problem solving. We're happy to help work through those possible solutions. 
and looking at maybe time, extra time as compensation or even financial compensation for the additional duties that we've been fulfilling. Also, um, I know the school board has adopted a curriculum committee and we think that's an excellent place for students and teachers to have a voice. Since last January, our association has been repeatedly requesting conversation and teamwork with district leadership and leadership of the board of directors. We've never been afforded an opportunity, so we think that curriculum development committee would be a great place for us to start. So thanks for considering that. Thank you for the report. To give full disclosure, the fact that there's pending grievances also affects the ability for us to meet and talk when there's pending grievances uh, from the union. So we look forward to having those resolved and then we can get open communication going again. Building Finance Committee, Dave, do you have anything to add beyond what we uh, No, I just want to thank the board for coming out to all the meetings and, and the administration. I want to thank Steph. She got the finance people there and I, I think it's going to be a great uh, future for our school. Transportation Committee, Amy. Yes, um, I want to clarify the process of what we mean by one tier busing. Right now, we, we are considered two tier busing, not because necessarily of our two runs, but we do have two bus runs, but we have two buildings as well, and they're on different schedules. So when I talk about a tier one busing, I'm talking about a tier one schedule for the district where the, both schools are running no more than 10 minutes apart from what they currently, from each other. Um, there is a lot of positives about that, and I won't go into that, but number one positive is being able to meet as a staff in this room whenever we need to even any day of the week. Right now we are only together as a staff on in-service days. So the one tier busing, and um, Chris Wolf and I have been working, and she's been talking to the, or to the contractors. One of the things that you'll see, parents, is there won't necessarily be a huge change for you. Um, some elementary will ride with high school, but there will still be like little mini runs and new runs created so that we can afford ourselves to be one tier, one district. Um, we talk about the schools, the road out here separating our schools. In discovery of all of this, the time that we don't have together is also separating us. So we need to have that be one. So you will be hearing more about that. We'll be having a transportation committee um, soon and we'll go from there. Thank you, Amy. Moving on to committee reports. Student board representatives, do you have reports for us? Thank you, Mr. Parker. The seniors had a good first quarter and many of them were on honor roll or high honor roll. There will be upcoming band and choir concerts in December and you can check the school calendar for details about that. Also, in order to serve as positive role models, the seniors took their second period time last Wednesday to assist the seventh and eighth graders through an obstacle course. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Everyone is working hard, and we're ready for our Thanksgiving break starting November 24th, which is a half day. All fall sports are over with, and each sport had a great season. We have two first-team all-conference players, seven second-team all-conference players, and one third-team all-conference player. Youth Council had their first trunk or treat, which was a success. And tomorrow, Youth Council is doing their first blow bubbles, not smoke. Thank you. Thank you both, and I wanted to take a second and say something here uh, to you, Ms. Schaefer, and you both do a wonderful job, uh, but Ms. Schaefer, I just wanted to tell you that I think you do a wonderful job, and I think that you're an example for us on the last two or three times where you have raised 
issues where there's a concern or potential disagreement, you've done so in a professional and polite manner, not accusatory, not hostile, and I really respect that. I don't think we should take that for granted. I think that's a great thing that you do. I encourage you to keep bringing us those things and keep doing it the way that you do because I think a lot of us grown-ups lose sight of that and we tend to want to go to war on everybody and fight about everything too fast and if we learn to act like you and just talk about it, I, I think we'd all be going in the right direction. So I really wanted to commend you. I think you're doing a great job and I suggest you keep doing it. You'll go far. So, Nathaniel, can I add to that? Last Absolutely. board meeting, the young lady come in and somebody asked her, how's school going? Oh, it's great. She was so excited. And that brought excitement to me as a board member instead of sitting here saying, oh, what are we going to go through tonight? She brought the brightness to the room. Last board meeting. And I didn't get a chance to say that, and I want to thank you for it. Thank you so much. Okay. Moving to... Richard, Information Systems Director. Hello. The MIS department, combined with the efforts of myself, Megan Staub, and Michael Bertoni, have solved 40 tickets in our ticketing system last, for last month for teachers, administrators, as well as questions have been answered via email for students, teachers, and parents. Uh, we have continued work under the supervision of Megan Staub on visual updates as well as consistent updates to new news and information for the users of our website to get up-to-date information. Uh, we, we have worked closely with the guidance department, so teachers of quarter one grades were out to students in a smooth process with no major concerns or issues, and the grades are delivered on time. Uh, Michael Bertoni has been working with every elementary classroom to incorporate technology in each of the teachers' classrooms, as well as helping out to answer any questions and tips to teachers to help them directly inside of their own classrooms. That's it. Thank you. Any questions for Richard? Good job. Okay. Moving on to business manager report. Stephanie. Make the move. Okay. The request. Okay. Okay. Stephanie's violating the microphone rule, but she's telling me that <laughs> she's got a presentation that she's going to give us. So I think we probably should, so the people at home can see it. Put it on the screen, because otherwise they're not going to see it, right, Richard? You want to put it on the screen? Is there any other way for the public to see it? Probably okay, not. Okay. Then screen it is. Okay, I got my microphone now, Nathaniel. Um, I'll make this pretty short and sweet. Um, the district has been uh, in the middle of their local normal yearly audit. Um, I do have a 
little note there that the audit is not final. Um, because of grant funding, uh, we do need to go through a single audit this year. Um, so we're still in the middle of our single audit part of the audit. So I don't expect any material adjustments, but I just want to put that disclosure out there that they're still reviewing our grants and there could be an adjustment. Um, as you can see, hopefully you can see, um, our budgeted for 2021, and it's very difficult to see, kind of cuts it off. We were projecting a loss of $162,000 when we did our estimated budget. Um, with the actual, because of grant funding, um, we did come in at $1.4 million. Um, as everybody knows, last year, Due to the pandemic, it was a you know a, a year that was like no other. It was something we weren't anticipating, um, but the school district was able to expend funds that were permitted by the grants, and that did allow us to have a 1.4 million dollar profit. Just kind of re to review the revenue side of things, um, the school district has local, state, and federal funding. Um, for the local, we had $173,000 more than we projected in our budget. Uh, just to bring up some points that um, created that, uh, one was our tax collection rate. Uh, in 1920, the collection rate was 92%, and we did see a 93% collection rate for the year 2021. So it actually um, was for the better of the school district. Um, we also had the judicial sale of the 76 truck stop, um, and it was a estimated profit of $50,000. That was something we weren't anticipating, but we're very happy with the district that that sold and can be potential revenue that we haven't had um, in prior years. Earned income taxes, when we did our estimate, uh, we weren't really sure what was gonna happen with the pandemic and how that was gonna um, affect our earned income tax revenue. I can be happy to say that we actually had better collection that we, that we estimated. Um, it was $33,000 more than what we actually anticipated. Um, for our state funding, it actually went down $186,000. And the material reasons for that, um, there are subsidies for tuitions for orphan and childs. Um, that is just an estimate. I have no control over that. It just depends what students that we have in the district at the time. So that decreased by $25,000 in the actual amount. For special ed, um, the state has us calculate the cost of each special ed student and put it into a certain category. And those categories determine how much special ed funding that we get um, each year. The estimate was actually $23,000 less than we actually got. Um, pupil transportation subsidy, um, we probably would have been right in line with what we estimated in the budget. But uh, all school districts were notified that they could possibly have a decrease due to changes in the market value in excess of cost calculation. Uh, CEL was one of those, and we lost around, I don't think I had it in there, I thought it was around $20,000 that we had lost. Um, that was not something that we could control. It was a change in the calculation, and um, the received amount was less than projected. This is kind of cut off, so I'm sorry, but the federal grants you can see increased 1.7 million. And that list there that you can't see the whole entire amount, all the grants that we received in 2021 fiscal year that we um, ex used permitted expenses for was $1.7 million. So it was pretty much a, a wash with the federal grants that we received and that's why the increase. For our expenses, um, overall we were 139,000 over. Um, I just want to bring to your attention professional services. You can see it's a decrease of $334,000, almost $335,000. Um, we actually had decreases uh, in our SRO. We used to um, contract 
the SRO, and now we employ Mark Graff, who's doing a very good job. Um, we have decreased IU cost and professional development. And I also want to bring to your attention, oops, I said that was, professional service actually decreased by 136,000, sorry, I misstated, and supplies increased almost 335,000, which those supplies were mainly due to, or were due to, the pandemic and the safety measures that we had to take with cleaning and different items that we had to purchase. So that was the increase. So overall, I just wanted to um, show the governmental fund balance for the general fund um, is $6 million. The capital projects fund is $358,000. Um, and tonight the board will discuss to commit um, the $4.5 million. So if anybody has any questions, I'll take your questions. Um, professional services, is that the IU that you said that was? The IU was part of that. Some of the IU costs went down. Yeah, Salary and wages went up, correct? Salary and wages actually went up 16.3 almost over what we budgeted. Is that correct? I'm moving back to that page. Yes, that's correct. Okay. I did want to say, I should have said this at the beginning, the board actually received a um, more detailed breakdown of the budget. Um, so if you guys have any additional questions, you can let me know. But this was an overview for the public and for the board. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, next up is the admin team, superintendent admin team report. Amy, you want to lead that off? I can do that. Um, I want to say that, Cecilia, you have always been very special to me. And um, Emily, you have learned, or taught, I'm sorry, you've taught Cecilia to be like she is as well. I know that. You've mentored her very well, and Cecilia's come a long way. And part of that is due to Emily being um, a help to you with the program. And so you will need to do that next year then to our junior that will be appointed. Um, I would like to um, thank the IT department again, along with Mr. Stanfest, Stacy Wiles, and Tammy Wagner, because the report cards were so smooth. Um, could never have been done without all of that hard work. I would also like to mention that we've talked about safety in our school and what we're going to do at the elementary school, and I do want to let the board know that we have secured a program, the Identikid Badge, that everyone that comes into the school building has to be checked in and it tells if there's any concerns there. And um, I would like to, Mr. Graff actually and I talked today, and we would like to show you that process. Next board meeting, like at 6.15, come over to the high school and show you how that works. Um, because we're proud of that, and it's a step in the right direction for our safety measures here at the school. And, I'd also like to mention that Dave Agleton 
has been a huge, huge component, part of the success of getting to this part with our building. And um, he's humble about it because he's thanked everyone else, but I, as the superintendent, need to thank him in public because without him leading the way and pushing along and having us do the things that he had us do, we wouldn't be here. So I do appreciate that and I'm excited. I'm so excited for this to happen. I would also like to uh, recognize Mr. Jamison as um, our stand-in board member for about eight months, I would say. Larry, it, gosh, it went really fast. Um, and we will miss you, but we appreciate all that you have given us and contributed to this board and to this district, and we appreciate the time that you took non-paid to be a part of our team. Welcome. And Kathy, she has been here four years with our board and with our school district. She is um, a phenomenal person. If you know, if you don't know her, the best word I can use for her is genuine. What comes out of her mouth is what is what she's thinking. Um, she is very supportive. She has been um, an activist for students in our district, and I will deeply miss her. However, she's a phone call away, and I hope to see her out in the audience after this board meeting, and I thank her for all of her dedication to our district. And finally, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. We're all looking forward to that. Mr. Aaron, do you have a report? I just want to mention to the board, I know the, the people who were here for the curriculum committee um, got to hear some of the things that we're talking about and even when there was discussions about discipline uh, in the school, I just want to let you know, at the high school we implemented one of our components to the PBIS uh, system and and even the the two teachers that were involved with it kind of were leery and didn't know if it was going to work and they've been amazed by we we did a, a thing with seventh eighth graders and i'll tell you what the the seventh eighth, eighth graders have done an exceptional job of of meeting the goals that we set for them um the basics of what we set up for them was uh, with the scheduling i do have the gym open during their lunch so once they finished their lunch, uh, they had three goals to improve their moving around, not to move around as much, uh, to control their volume, and to clean up their spaces better. And basically, everyone that does that, there's an opportunity for one of 20 tickets, and those kids who get the 20 tickets for meeting those three goals, they get to go up to the gym and just, just play for 15 minutes. And, it's been great. There's there's groups of kids that have not got along before, and they'll go up there and they'll play a basketball game together. And so I just want you to know, um, the students, as usual, make this place to, one of the greatest places to be. And the seventh and eighth graders are really really pushing it to to help improve. So. Good evening, I have two items that I wanted to share. <clears throat> and uh, since Mel shared about his PBIS success, I also then have a third one to share regarding our kindergarten, um, our kindergarten classes. We are using a PBIS tier two intervention um, with a, a group of about half a dozen students. Um, they are all making tremendous progress and um, we're going on a good week and a half now of uh, improved behavior from that group. So uh, that was uh, created by the kindergarten team and Dr. Alex Gray, our school psychologist. Um, so the first thing that I'm excited about is uh, we have an in-service day coming up on November 30th, and some of the items that we are going to be um, uh, trained on is trauma with our own Diana Dietrich, threat assessment, online training um, through safe schools, 
And then Brandon Maines from IU6 is going to be doing special ed law. And our very own uh, tech team of Megan Staub and Richard Cumston are going to be doing uh, FIDS Day training. So we're excited about those things. And finally, I have uh, a statement here from our incredible, awesome elementary librarian, Pete Beskid. Mr. Beskid wanted me to read this to you. Uh, he said, we had the most successful book fair last month in our recorded era of CL history. We shattered all financial, books purchased, and cash register records. Our school will benefit immensely as a result of the generosity displayed by our students, their families, loved ones, friends, and faculty and staff of the whole Clarion Limestone area community. Thank you for your support. Sincerely, Mr. Pete Beskid. And that's all I have this evening. Nothing to report. I just want to follow up on the report items referencing PBIS. We had talked about that as a component or in relation to our handbook and trying to get a correlation between PBIS, the handbook, and have everything clearly communicated for our, our staff members, our students, and everybody. I understand that's something that the admin team is still working on, correct? Okay. So that's one, my understanding is they'll be bringing us a recommendation. I don't know, maybe I'm getting, I think it's the cart before the horse, not the horse before the cart, but uh, it might be a rewrite of the handbook, I don't know, but the whole idea to me is one of our key issues is communication, and we need everybody to understand what the expectations are and the discipline standards, and that's what we're, we're we understand there's a need, we've heard the concerns, and the admin team is working on it, so we appreciate everyone's patience in allowing them the opportunity to develop that. It's not something they can turn out in a night, so patience is needed, but they will be getting back to us on that. So if you're wondering what the PBIS is and what that means going forward, there will be more information on that coming. Executive session announcement, there was none. Item five, public comment. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment? Mrs. Johnston, no? Okay. I will just say that last night they had invited me to come. I can't let you talk over there. It's a microphone violation. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he was a microphone Nazi. No, I wish I hadn't spoken. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for last night's presentation. I know I, like Mr. Quinn, who his first meeting with us was, I'm old school, and I am old school also. So I'm thinking, do we need a new gym? We've done this gym for however long, and I can continue doing that. But I have to say, I went home last night very impressed, very excited about the possibility of what you are planning and doing in this district. And Dave and I spoke after the meeting, and we said, we may not be here years from now to enjoy the fruits of this new gym like many of you will be, but we are proud of it. I like what you're doing. I think you have gone above and beyond, not just the building committee people, but all of you. And so thank you again for your service as board members. January is always School Board Appreciation Month, but I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you and our uh, exiting individuals and welcoming our new ones as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to add public comment? Yes. Kathy Henry, I believe, would like to say something via a microphone. Excellent, you're ready. Yes, I got it. Um, I just wanted to like sit, share a few things with you guys tonight. So hopefully I can get through this, so bear with me for a second. Board members, administration, teachers, students, and community members. Thank you for the opportunity given to me to serve on this board. This was an opportunity for me to take on a challenge to support students, teachers, administration, 
community, and most importantly, my school too. The past four years, a lot was accomplished, but there's still plenty of work to be done, as we have seen. But while I was on the board, there's some things I think that you should know that I was actively involved in. The management team. The management team met and we um, delegated work responsibilities and did some team bonding to provide a cohesive administrative team. This was the group that actually sat down together and we revised the chain of command and that's currently in the student handbook and on the website. Building and finance, working through the budget, evaluating financial stability of the district, discussing plans for like how we can make changes in the district for the structures for the betterment of the students uh, as a greater good. The pandemic task force, this is where I was involved with Amy and other individuals where we discussed real statistics, gathered information from other facilities and possible processes that we could use during COVID-19 the sanitation conversations, the supplies needed for that, and you know how those project uh, supplies would be purchased, etc. And then uh, the curriculum committee. We just started this um, program or this committee, and so we're going to look at the school to see where we need to make some changes. You know, where are we wasting any time? Where can we benefit in improving our class or core curriculum? And then, last but not least, telemedicine which I was asked if I would help facilitate the workings of this. This would happen here within the buildings and we would work with local schools to help improve the health and safety of the students. So being on the board for four years, I can say that it's never always easy. There are many discussions, challenges, disagreements, frustrations, and compromises, and a lot of tough decisions, all which were made for the good intentions of the students which is where I hope that this board continues to go. So I may not be on the board, but I'm a community member and I will always stand strong in support of the highest education possible for the students in this district. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, that will conclude public comment. There is no old business, new business, item A, Consideration for retroactive appro approval to advertise November 5, 2021 for and seek request for proposals for an investment grade audit services. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I have a motion from Dave, a second from Gary. Any discussion from the board? All in favor say aye. All opposed? All opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion passed. Dave, I'm going to ask you a question. On, on item B, the way it appears in the agenda is the way SiteLogic gave it to us. With that's, the, with that's the way our solicitor gave it to us? That, that's how it had to be advertised for us to be able to, to have a presentation last night and tonight? So you're talking A or B? B. So do, is the motion left blank then? Or do we put SiteLogic in? No, we can put SiteLogic. They're the only ones. Uh, okay. That sent a uh, letter of um, that wanted to be part of it. I believe. Am I right on that, Donna? It's the only request we got. 
so we can fill that in with site logic. Okay. Okay, so item B is consideration for approval to award site logic based upon request for proposals for investment grade office services advertised November 5th, 8th, and 15th, and which was received on November 15th. Do I have a motion to approve? I think I heard Kathy and then Joe with a second. Any further discussion from the board? All this is doing is saying that they can present what they presented last night and tonight. That is not voting to go with the project. Right. That relates to the that uh, guaranteed energy savings. Process. The guaranteed energy savings part of it, right. Right, okay. Any other discussion or questions from the board? Okay, Donna, this is a roll call vote. Motion passed. Item C, consideration for approval to publicly advertise on November 18th the intent to consider the award of a guaranteed energy savings project in an amount not to exceed $7 million with site logic at the December 6th, 2021 school board reorganization voting meeting. So moved. Second. Motion from Joe, second from Gary, thank you. Any? Discussion or question from the board? This number had to be put in before last night's presentation to, to meet the 24 hour um, deadline. The new Sunshine Law. Exactly, yeah, to, to, for the Sunshine Law. As you, this is for the um, energy savings part only. As you've seen in the presentation with no changes, that number will be closer to the five, nine to six million dollar number. Okay, everyone clear on that? Any further discussion? Roll call vote, please. Corey Bish? Yes. Dave Edelkin? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Brian Hewar? Yes. Larry Jamison? Yes. Nathaniel yes. Parker? Yes. Gary Stoll? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Belon? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, item D, consideration for approval of the following day-to-day -day substitutes. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Kathy with a motion, Joe second, thank you. Any discussion from the board? Roll call vote, please. Passed. Item E, consideration for approval of a correction to the following 21-22 supplemental contract. It was for B.J. Wren, assistant, boys varsity basketball coach. We apparently had the incorrect dollar amount on the prior motion, so this is something we've approved before, but we're correcting the dollar amount. Do we have a motion to approve? I'm making a motion. I think I heard. Gary with the motion, is that Kathy with a second? Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Roll call vote, please. Kathy Henry? Yes. Brian Hewar? Yes. Larry Jamison? Yes. Virginia Parker? Yes. Gary Stoll? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Belai? Yes. Corey Bish? Yes. Dave Abelson? Yes. Motion passed. Item F. Consideration for approval of the following 21-22 supplemental contracts. This is athletic director and assistant athletic director. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion from Joe, I think, and second from Corey. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any discussion or questions from the board? Roll call vote, please. Brian Newark? Yes. Larry Jamison? Yes. Kenya Parker? Yes. Motion passed. Item G, consideration for approval 
to purchase baseball uniforms for the 21-22 baseball season at an approximate cost of $3,333.75. Before I ask for a motion, I'm gonna ask Amy just to bring us up to speed on the background for this. And Brian, too, I don't know, you might have some information too to add, we'll get you in a second. Uh, just to cut to the chase, this kind of coincides with this wonderful evening, this, this great board meeting tonight. With our top students here, we're celebrating the ad department with what they've done. We're moving forward to help our students and our teachers to have a great environment to be taught in. And this is another good problem. Could be, I'm looking at it as a good problem, and I hope you do too, because we have a baseball team that is growing. And right now, there are, they're anticipating 19 baseball players and four coaches, and right now that would be 23 uniforms, and we have 16. Um, to go along with that, it has also been a rotation for uniforms, and the baseball uniforms are due for rotation. They've been due. It's two years overdue. And so um, this seems to be the perfect opportunity to, for the board to support my decision to buy, purchase these baseball uniforms. Along with that, I will add that there will be accountability for these uniforms as well for the coach from the ADs um, that we get all 19, all 25, we are purchasing 25, returned and that process has it, have it not been happening will begin to happen again. Um, where I would like to talk about taking the money from is from, you know, we had a very skeleton budget this year and we all knew that and we knew there were gonna be some things that came up and our contingency fund has um, $106,000 in it and we have purchased welders for almost 15,000 um, you heard Mr. Kale, and um, we have a, a total of $91,968 in that fund. We never know what's going to happen or come up, but I would like and request that the board vote in favor of spending the $3,333.75 to purchase 25 baseball uniforms. As I understand what you're saying, from budgeted funds from the miscellaneous or account. Right. Okay, is everyone clear on what they're, okay, do I have a motion or approve? Second. A motion from Corey, I think Gary was second. Do I have any discussion or comment from the board? The only thing I'd like to say is when we're buying things at the last minute, I'd like to see three bids to you, and I know you didn't get that, but we should have three bids to make sure, not just one bid. So um, I'm in favor if they need them, but we should have three bids. I mean, we all on the building committee see the difference two bids made. So. Brian, do you have anything you want to throw in on this? Passed. 
Okay, item H, uh, consideration for approval of SAT prep course instructor supplemental contracts for Holly Pence and Jen Simpson. Motion from Kathy, sounded like Joe was the second. Any discussion or questions from the board? Roll call vote, please. Yes. Motion passed. Item I. This is a retroactive approval consideration for approval of Rochelle Miller as a game manager worker for the 21-22 school year retroactive to November 2nd. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mo motion from Joe, second from Kathy. Any discussion or questions from the board? Roll call vote, please. Gary Sproul? Yes. Rebecca Allison? Yes. Joe Belard? Yes. Corey Dish? Yes. Dave Abelson? Yes. Kathy Henry? Yes. Brian Huar? Yes. Larry Jamison? Yes. Nathaniel Parker? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, item J. Item J is something we have to discuss. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to do that before we have a motion because we, uh, to explain this to everybody, the policy 620 prescribes that we should have an uncommitted fund balance of anywhere from 8 to 11 percent of our budgeted expenditures. Did I get that right, Stephanie? It's 8 to 11 percent of budgeted expenditures of that fiscal year. Okay, so that's where the 4.534 million that you see in the body of the motion, that's the total amount that needs to be committed to get us down to approximately 10 percent, correct, Stephanie? So we're erring on the side of leaving more money uncommitted in the fund balance to stay with the policy, but we're committing the rest of it to again stay with the policy. The 4.534 includes the 3.074 you see below that. And it's my understanding that we as a board, prior boards committed the funds that you see below that comprise the 3.074 million. We as a board can reallocate, change that depending on our needs, our plans going forward. The idea would be to commit funds to expenditures that you anticipate coming up. That's, as I understand the policy and the reason behind it is to, again, commit the funds to what the anticipated expenditures are going to be. And so, before we can vote on it, we need to have a, a proposed number. Um, my understanding that this would be a proposal, I'll throw it out there, and then if there's other uh, suggestions or alternatives, we can look at it. The proposal would be to make, put the elementary renovation project or elementary project to two million. The capital project to, this is a lot of numbers, I blame Dave for this. <laughs> uh, Dave and Stephanie talked before it, and that's where this is coming from. Uh, so, an elementary project, two million. The capital project, one million five hundred twenty-three thousand nine hundred sixty-seven dollars and eighty cents. I'll, I'll read numbers. Ready? One five two three nine six seven eight zero. So that's one million. Five hundred twenty-three thousand nine hundred sixty-seven dollars and eighty cents. Capital project, technology, two hundred thousand, and retirement, eight hundred ten thousand sixty-nine dollars. And 
Stephanie's guaranteeing to me that those numbers add up to be, I wanted to make her nervous there for a minute, $4,534,036.08. Actually, I can tell you that's not right. One of the two numbers is wrong because it ends in eight cents up top and 80 cents below. That's you, Steph. You had the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> you already found my error when I did it by hand. So I'm going to guess that capital at the bottom is, is instead of 80 cents, it's eight cents. Correct? That Russian number up top would need to change. I think the jury's still out on that one. We're, 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 we're deliberating. It's eight zero eight cents. So, Dave, are you making that in the form of a motion? Yes. Um, did we put those numbers on there? <laughs> you did a good job reading them. I like to make a motion that we approve it this way, um, and I'll go into some explanation afterwards. Okay, hang on. Let me see. Stephanie said I left something out. Okay, what we do, Steph? You've got the calculator. I did it all by hand. You found my 6,000 here. <laughs> when do you girls add them numbers up for us over there? <laughs> In your head, mental math, you can do it. Who's the math person over there? Which my question would be, how does Common Core say we're supposed to add that number? What's that? How does Common Core say we're supposed to add that up? Well, uh, Round up, estimate, subtract. Divide by 12. Yeah, that's what we said. Okay. okay. Yeah, but the 6,000 was mine. I'll admit it. That's right. You caught mine. Now, Nathaniel caught yours. I mean, I'd like to make it in the form of a motion to approve the um, committed fund balance in the proper place. Second. Okay, I have a motion. I'm messing with Donna's universe here. Uh, motion from Dave, second from Gary. Don and I are just comparing notes to make sure she has the same numbers written down that I said. 200,000 technology. Yeah, 1523967088. And 2 million in elementary. And that totals that number at the bottom, the four five three four zero three six zero eight. Okay. Does anyone now would be time for discussion? There's a motion on the table. Is there discussion, comments, questions, other suggestions? So my proposal would be to put those together and approve those with a voice vote unless somebody has a particular item that they'd like to discuss. So take a few minutes here and let me know if there's something you'd like to pull out and discuss separately. Let me ask this way. Does anyone else have any other motions that they want to talk about or have discussion on? Okay, my proposal would be let's just lump them all together and then we'll have that discussion on L after we get a motion in a second. Do I have a motion to approve items K through P? Second. A motion from Dave, second from Gary. I real close to somebody else. Okay, so I have a motion and a second for K through P. And Gary, you wanted to have discussions, so I'll give you the floor. Go ahead. Yeah, what, uh, for each of these courses, uh, Matt, what, what grades is for the organic chemistry? 
Organic chemistry would be your 11th and 12th grade. That's going to be an upper level uh, pre-college class. Biology? The biology is, um, as we've talked, I know with the curriculum uh, committee we've talked, and maybe uh, some of you haven't heard, there's five pathways uh, for graduation through Act 158. Um, one of the pathways is if you have a student who passed, but in this way, the example for science, they pass biology, but they fail the Keystone exam. If they pass the next subsequent class that is biology related, then, then they would pass the Keystone and move on. We do not have a biology-based class right now, so this is actually going to provide a biology-based class to help students not have to constantly keep taking the Keystone exam or risk, according to the, the way they say in the law, and not being able to graduate because of the Keystones. Who will be teaching our organic chemistry? Um, Mr. Alden. Okay. And are all these books part of that program? Uh, the one book is for the, that would be for the um, biology course. There, Food science, they're going to make it more of a hands-on kind of uh, related to practical items so that the students may make a better connection for it to, to pass the biology portion of the Keystones. That's a nice lab. What's the readability of this book? I forgot you're violating the microphone rule. What's the readability? Do you know? Is Do you remember what the readability is on it? I think most of the time they have it right in the front corner, in the front of the book now. Okay. Yeah, I like the layout of it. Do you want me to so. come up and talk here? Or? If you want to talk, go ahead and want to. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, I like your insights. <laughs> sure, yeah. So the purpose that I wanted to talk about or discuss was something that was more of a hands-on learning activity. So what the purpose of this one would be is we were going to try to do as a PBA this year for the next coming year. And Mrs. Eggleton and I would co-teach the class. So we were planning on instituting it during second period for the students that would not pass the Keystone exam. Now, this was something that we thought about possibly instituting as a class for those students instead of making it just uh, second period, but that would have to be something that would be discussed after a year of teaching. So we wanted to kind of do it as a preliminary to see if we could co-teach the class first and then go from there. But they had a lot of um, food science organized. And I know that's not one of those things you see more in the Food Network kind of thing. So I want to kind of institute a little bit of that because currently we don't have any kind of home economics here. So that was something I wanted to bring in as a possible elective class possibly down the, down the line. So again, that's just preliminary, kind of see how it works this next year and go from there. Now for the material, since this is hands-on, do we have a lot of material? Materials, or is it going to have to order a lot of materials to go with this purpose? So my next year one would be um, was trying to do it bare bones, skeleton, see what we can work with, and go from there to see what we would need to collect or to budget for the following year. So the workbook that goes with it actually has a lot of the hands-on learning stuff. There's a lot of like thermochemistry with it because it's the food kind of developed, but there's also a little bit of your food safety with it as well. So that would be something more along the lines of the biological end. So we, Mrs. Eggleton and I were gonna try to go, go at it together, possibly within this next year during in-service days, we kind of meet together, figure out how we were gonna organize it. We sort of already separated it out on our different chapters that we looked at. We found ones that were going to be more corresponding to the ones that she teaches in her class, and we wanted to kind of make it more of a curricular activity. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? I hope that you're teaching the cooking part. That's all I got to say. Uh, well, <laughs> well we're, we're consider gonna, who you're working we're, with. We're going to figure out what we're going to do there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. Do, do you know of any other districts have used this? For I do not. Actually, I found that online, Gary, and I liked the way that it was set up. So I ordered it personally. So that's my copy and the workbook. All that's me. Bought it myself. So I looked through it, made sure that what we had looked okay. And the different vernacular or the different vocabulary in it was important enough that I thought, and I discussed it with Mrs. Eggleton, and her and I kind of made a you know, co-decision on that. We thought that would be a good book to use. Yeah, I, I like the, the look of it and 
presentation. It's, it's a new and upcoming one. Plus, it also comes with resource materials that I also ordered along with it. So there's study guides. There's other ones that are also resources that come with that curriculum as well. Mr. Alden, thank you. That sounds um, like good planning on the part of the administration, Mr. Stanfest, yourself, Ms. Singleton. Sounds, ex sounds wonderful. Um, my question is, as we go to one more one-to-one -one less paper, are these books online that can be? They are not. They're not. So that would have to be something that I could find. Now, if I want me to look for that, I could possibly do that. I don't know if there was a program that went along with it as well. I can do that. So. No, you like the book. I'm okay with that. Maybe talk to the company and tell them you need well, it online. The, the, um, the resources that <laughs> I did kidding, receive but. seem to be good because they actually give you a good course layout on a week by week or semester to semester. With the course submission that I did with um, for Mr. Aaron, it did. You could do it by semester, you could do it by year, you could do it by quarter, trimester, however. They broke it down into the chapters that should be accomplished by week to week. So it was, it's a good layout. It was a good resource that I picked up. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Anybody else? Questions? Thank you for your efforts, Mr. Sure, no problem. We appreciate it. Thank you. Brian, do you have anything to add from a curriculum standpoint? I think it's a great, great thing to author organic chemistry with, uh, in the, some of the trades, engineering and you know, doctors, uh, you know, uh, pharmacists, all that kind of stuff. I think. That's a great offering, um, you know, and, it, and the biology was good too. Um, so uh, I think it's it's a great thing that we're offering that and getting an introduction before somebody has to take them to college. And I hear that organic chemistry in college is, is pretty terrifying, so it's better to get your feet wet in, in high school. So I agree. Thank you. Anyone else have any other questions or comments about it? L or K through P? Well, it's just a recommendation that uh, for down the road, when we are going to approve new books or a new course. It would be nice since we have a curriculum committee that we are given a month so the board that's on that committee can sit down and go through the books, look at them, especially like a new reading program so we're not in the situation that we've been in with our reading program. And uh, I would like to to do that. I think that just gives us a better chance to go through them and uh, and I really, really, you know, are thankful for your expertise on these books, so I really appreciate that. Anyone else? Can I add one more thing? Oh. Absolutely. I, I did look over multiple different texts that look for food science with that one specifically, but the curriculum in the organic chemistry is actually the curriculum that I use for my organic in college as well. So that one is a better language for a high school student to understand organic chemistry. And Mr. Jameson, I gave your daughter those ones. Hopefully that helps her a little bit. And she has kind of alluded to me it was a good thing that she, she helped her understand a little bit better. So the language in that is better for anybody that may not have the language of organic chemistry to understand it better. And that was actually a very um, inexpensive version. It's only about $15. So I discussed with Mel possibly the kids that take that class could actually keep their book if they would purchase it. So it'd be a cheaper one instead of doing the $150 or $200 for a lot of your science books are more expensive. So it was a less expensive version. And I would just adapt to that book for the kids to actually keep. So, Do you know about how many students would interested in I, that again Gary I have no idea I, I I just put that out there I enjoyed organic so I would love to teach it but again that was something that I wanted to put out there is one of those things that I wanted to do as soon as I started but getting my curriculum developed in a way that I could then go for another one to teach was more prominent for me once I felt more comfortable here so thank you sure. thank you okay there's no further comment or discussion. We'll do a, a voice vote. All in favor of K through P, say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion passed. Uh, before we adjourn, at the end, I always ask if anybody has anything else they want to discuss. We can't vote on anything because it's the sunshine rule, but is there anything else anybody wants to discuss?
Uh, not yet. Well, I get just a second. I gotta make sure I do what Donna tells me or else bad things happen. Uh, I need to remind everybody that there's a reorganizational meeting and voting meeting for any business that might come before the board on Monday, December 6, 2021, 6.30 p.m. right here. Now, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion from Dave, is there a second? Second from Corey, I think that was. All in favor say aye. All opposed, no. Any abstentions? Motion passed, meeting adjourned.